Hi everyone, welcome back. This is Mandy. <laughs> I sped this up, but those are moon rocks from Color Art. And the color is Nautilus Shell. And the color you see on the plate there is Platinum Rose. It's a prism pour color. And sorry, my dog is walking around. And it's a prism pour color that I'm basically painting. Sorry, that was my dog again. Painting a a layer down um, underneath where I'm going to put those moon rocks um, and then after the paint dries I apply some Pebeo Cern relief just to create a little bit of a, a ridge um, so that when I put epoxy down um, it kind of keeps it in one place and what I was showing you there was this little crystal I made with a mold and I was thinking about including it so I was just kind of hypothetically putting it down there in case I decide to include it so I would have a, an idea in my head of where it might go. I don't end up including it. What I'm finding is it's um, if, if I'm personally going to use like a little crystal or something like that, it almost needs to be the only thing. I, <laughs> I used one on this purple themed uh, little geode I'm working on and I've had so much trouble not making it look busy and weird. Um, I know I tend to overthink things a little bit. Sorry, my dogs have literally been laying down doing nothing until I started doing this, and now they want to scratch and shake and drink water and all that. So my other dog is drinking water now, of course. So now I'm, um, I have a little bit of a layer of epoxy. I let the CERN relief dry. I have a layer of epoxy, and I'm just putting down my moon rocks, and I'll let those dry. All right, so I'm going to take this millionaire glitter that I get from Lily's Glitter Shop. I mixed it pretty thick with my resin that was already uh, thickening up a little bit. And I, because it is kind of a semi-chunky glitter, I put it in a little sandwich bag. And I'm going to cut the edge and almost like a, like a cake piping type situation because I kind of want a thick line. I do have syringes for thinner lines, but I wanted it to be a thick line. So, and so I'm basically just kind of creating a little, a little dam. And then after it dried, I came back in with a little resin to cover up the moon rocks and let those dry. Um, from my first geode, I kind of learned to maybe not do all that in the same step, because if you end up using too much resin, it flows into your moon rocks and messes everything up. All right, let me show you my colors. All right, Interference Oyster Satin from Color Art. It's kind of a pearl color. And I'm out of frame there. It's really beautiful. Pomegranate, which is a resin art color from Color Art. I'm going to mix it with black cherry wine, which is right there now color art has a black cherry and a pomegranate primary elements these are resin art pigments um i first saw erica from artist till death mix these two colors together and it makes a really beautiful color so that's where i got the idea before you guys think i'm a genius um so there's such beautiful colors i mean just no words interference gold from color art so the oyster and the interference gold, um, like the interference colors can be used in acrylic or in resin. Sorry about my phone buzzing. And I'm using white album, which is a base tint from faux rizzle. And I mixed some of my leftover, um, one of those colors, I think pomegranate with interference gold, and it's really pretty, um, but it doesn't go with what I had in mind. So you'll see me add it and then take it off, <laughs> but it's really pretty. That's one thing that's fun about uh, these interference colors is you can kind of change colors. Um, sorry about my phone. Red diamond. I love this color. I turned my ringer off so it'll stop doing that. So this is interference red diamond. So these are, this is like an interference red from color art. 
with very large particulates, so it's very, very sparkly. Mayron Gold, which is a floating pigment. It's really a makeup powder, but it works great as a floating pigment. I mixed it too thick, though. Um, if you've heard me mention it in previous videos, those floating pigments, you need very little pigment. And you don't want to get it too thick because then it doesn't have the same effects because it's too thick. So um, I'm learning. If you do mix it too thick and you need it to have an effect, just to torch the crap out of it. Now, my resin was a little too thin at this juncture. And so if you remember earlier in the video, I put that glitter line there to keep it from pouring into my moon rocks. And it's pouring in nonetheless. So I was over here having a fit because I used all that beautiful glitter, which isn't cheap, by the way. And... Now I was going to have to do it again. So you'll see me obsess, which is why I sped this up. So I'm basically taking a baby wipe and I'm trying to push that resin back um, off my glitter line. And at this point, I recognize I'm going to have to do the glitter line again. But what I don't want is for it to flow into my moon rocks like my first geo did and where I have to fix it. So I laid down that custom color I made and it's pretty, but it's distracting and it's going to be too busy. So at first I was like, well, maybe I can just blend it, which you can see the end result. This is how we get some of the, the gold peeking into this uh, custom red because I tried to blend it and kind of disguise it a little bit by shifting over that line. But then I was like, no, nah, I'm just going to take it off. So it still impacts the color a little bit, but um, not in a bad way. But I was like, no, nah, that was a good idea. But I tend to make um, geodes have too many main colors and then they get really busy. So if I was going to do that, I should have just done a lighter version of that color versus mixing it with gold because it made it too much of like a bright peachy pink. But anyway, I mean, it was still a beautiful custom color, just not ideal. So... Just for those of you guys who want to learn from my mistakes, if I had poured these resin lines further away from my glitter line, that would have been better. I wouldn't have had to spend so much time trying to chase it away. Um, I think sometimes we mix stuff and think, oh, it's it's thick enough. And then you go and use it and you're like, oh my gosh, it's it's not. <laughs> so this is the Mayron Gold. Um, and interference gold and I love the way it interacts with what you put next to it and then a little line of the white album and I think that is the red diamonds and so um, at this point you can see that because I have so much resin and I'm not putting my other lines far enough away it's pushing my red and narrowing my lines. So just a tip, when you lay down your other colors, don't lay them so close to the other color. It's going to spread out. It's going to spread out may way more than you think it does. And if it doesn't, you can use a popsicle stick or something to get it closer to where you want it. But if you don't leave some room, it's going to push your colors in. But don't give up on this little guy yet because we're going to do another layer in just a second and I'm going to, I'm going to clean it up. I'm first of all, I'm going to fix that glitter line. So here we are. This is day next day. So new glitter line, right? And then I added a glitter line in some of the seeming negative space so that the Mayron gold didn't look so, you know, lonely. Um, so that is that millionaire glitter from Lily's Glitter Shop. It's amazing. And I mixed up another batch of the black cherry wine and the pomegranate. I didn't get the color exactly to match, but I let it sit for a little bit so it would be a little bit thicker. And um, I just thought, well, I really want to make sure that I have a, a good amount of color on there. I wanted that to be the main color. So I went ahead and added 
Um, I didn't do a flood coat or anything. I just added these glitter lines and I added more color to widen um, kind of the band of color. And it, like right now, you can't tell, but it really makes a difference and it makes the end result look a lot better. All right, so here she is. Um, this is after the flood coat, after the tape is off. You can see the edges um, are nice and white. So some really cool, you can see the red diamonds. They're just incredible. And I love the way the Mayron gold kind of runs into those and into the interference gold. This is that millionaire glitter from Lily's Glitter Shop. I love how sparkly it is. And even though I added these lines separate of color, um, and you can tell, they're it almost seems like I used a slightly different shade because I didn't mix it quite as light as the first time. And um, I just love that it widened my band of color because I didn't want to have a really tiny band of color. So, of course, the gorgeous moon rocks. So, of course, pretty much everything but the glitter, the Mayron gold, and the white I got from Color Art. So, you know... I'll list everything below, and of course you can still save 20% using my coupon, Mandy1120. And I think there's a sale that might be still going on where you can save even more. I love the way the Mayron Gold interacted um, right here. Super cool. So yeah, let me know what you think. Are you enjoying these experiments? I hope that you are. I'm gonna try to cut a freeform geode from MDF board. I can figure out how to use my husband's jigsaw. So that could be loads of fun. Anyway, let me know what you think. Thanks for watching. Appreciate you guys. Talk to you soon. Bye.